Today I am honored to be here on this uh, magnificent ship, really to say thank you. On behalf of the United States Marine Corps and the United States Navy and the American people, I am here to express our sincere thanks and to recognize the actions of the Director General of Maritime Operations, the Australian Clearance Diving Team 1, Her Majesty's Australian Ship Melville, Australian Mine Warfare Team 1-6, and the Australian Mine Warfare and Clearance Diving Task Group. As C. Jobs just mentioned, uh, on August the 5th last year, we did have an MV-22 Osprey returning. It was flying from shore back to the USS Green Bay, and it was loaded full of Marines, and there were 26, as you mentioned. Something went wrong as that aircraft approached the ship, and it ended up crashing into the side of the ship and into the water. And although the 23, as, as uh, accurately mentioned, were re they were recovered within an hour. That left three Marines unaccounted for. When I first heard about this uh, accident, I was in Hawaii at our headquarters. And the first few phone calls that I made were to my boss, uh, Admiral Harris at Pacific Command, my friend, Admiral Scott Swift at Pacific Fleet, and actually Jim Caruso's team here at our U.S. Embassy. It was pretty clear early on in those first few phone calls that we did not have a U.S. Navy salvage team or deep divers nearby. So the second set of phone calls were to our friends in the Australian Defense Force. I would tell you that the response on the phone was immediate. We have what you need and it will be on the way uh, this afternoon. So I asked them what, for this request, uh, how should I forward the, the request to the, to the right people to make sure that the format is followed and the procedures are good? And the answer was just as quick. You don't need to worry about any paperwork. You don't need to worry about a formal request. We got a phone call from you, help will be on the way. The next day, the very next day, the HMS Melville and Clearance Diving Team 1 and Mine Warfare Team 1-6, all of them arrived on scene and they immediately met with the Marine Corps and the Navy leadership on board the Green Bay and they started to plan that salvage and recovery operation. As Admiral Johnson mentioned, this, the, the conditions during this operation were not ideal. The water depth, the constantly changing tides, the sea state on the surface meant that each individual dive had to be meticulously planned and executed. And I would tell you that your Royal Australian Navy teams were up to that task and they performed brilliantly. I've served as a military diver in Marine Reconnaissance Units and that by no means makes me an expert on diving or recovery operations or salvage operations, but I do have some appreciation for diving under less than ideal conditions. When you add strong underwater currents and sea stays to that, it gets dicier. Your Australian divers, the ones that are standing here and the ones that they represent. Those divers and the support teams that were on the surface, they worked at depth in strong underwater currents for extended periods with limited rest between dives. The support teams that were on the surface battled through some, some pretty rough seas on several days during this operation. Most of the military divers that I know would have at least suspended those operations, perhaps canceled them all together because the conditions were marginal at best, but not your divers. They would not quit. They would not stop until all three of those Marines were found on the bottom of the ocean floor and brought back up. My experience is that friends are usually willing to help um, as long as it's not too inconvenient for them. 
True friends, true allies, are a little bit different. They will go the extra mile. They will put their lives on the line for you and for your men. That's what comrades in arms are. And in my experience, you don't find that all that often. But I have. Five years ago, I was a division commander in Afghanistan. And it was about this time of year. It was January or February. And we had a Marine Corps element in the northern part of Helmand province that was in a pretty good firefight. And it was in the mountains. And it was at night. And right around freezing, as I recall. We had aircraft at Camp Leatherneck that we could use to send reinforcements. What we did not have was a Marine unit available to send up north. In our operations center, in where I was, while I'm talking on the radio, there was a Australian Special Forces captain, or major, I can't remember which, uh, that we had worked with him in his, his special operations element for several months. He overheard me talking on the radio and said, hey, sir, we got this. Or something like that. Probably more colorful because he was special operations, but you kind of get the point. It was basically, we got it. Probably 35 or 40 minutes later, they launched from Camp Leatherneck uh, up into the mountains where our team was. Make a long story short, probably four and a half, five hours later, they, they returned with that team Everybody intact, everybody safe back on deck. For me, in other words, Australia-US relations are personal and they're professional. They're both. When the chips are down, you know who you can count on. Last year, ma'am, when we were in Washington, D.C., you told me about the first 100 years of mateship. And you gave me a pamphlet. So I did my reading, and I read a course about General John Monash and everything that had to do with the 100 years, but what really struck me was the story, it kind of stopped me in my tracks about uh, Army Corporal Bull, and I can't remember his last name? What? Okay, Bull Allen. Now this story is probably very familiar to people sitting here. I had never heard that story before. I mention it, ma'am, because this is 1943 and in Papua New Guinea, which we were talking about earlier, and that 26-year-old digger carried 12 U.S. soldiers on, one by one on his back under fire. Saved all 12 of them. To me, pretty remarkable story, and that had to be a pretty amazing soldier. But the connection between that and what happened in August for me pretty real. The U.S. awarded him, that digger, the Silver Star for his valorous actions. To the award recipients that are standing in formation, in my opinion, you undertook a fairly dangerous and difficult mission. It was a complex environment. Overall, it was an extraordinary operation, and your efforts reflect the strength of our military alliance, and your efforts also show the bonds that we share. The United States, the United States Marine Corps, and the families of those three recovered Marines, First Lieutenant Benjamin Cross, Corporal Nathaniel Ordway, and Private First Class Velasco, those families are eternally grateful for your selfless actions. I am very proud to present the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps Meritorious Unit Commendation to a true friend and an ally. The Meritorious Unit Commendation is awarded by the Secretary of the Navy to units that distinguish themselves by valor or meritorious achievement. It is the equivalent of our Bronze Star, only awarded for a unit, not an individual. It is well earned and it represents, represents our sincere appreciation for your outstanding performance and your unfailing commitment to never leave a Marine behind, never leave a comrade behind. Finally, 
I would be remiss if I didn't mention the motto of this beautiful ship in today's ceremony, which is United for the Common Good. It's hard to think of a more fitting motto for today's ceremony. We Australians and Americans, we share a lot. We share values and we share principles. We share a belief in democracy, the rule of law and individual freedom. We share a commitment to a stable, free and open international system. And we share an understanding that to uphold those values sometimes takes sacrifice. We have fought alongside for a hundred years. We fought on more than a hundred battlefields side by side in defense of those values. I believe that our history is important. We should never forget it. I believe we also live in a pretty tough world. And in a tough world, real friends really do matter. I don't know exactly what the challenges that we'll face in the future are, but I know that when we face them together, I feel a whole lot more confident about it. United for the common good. It's a pretty good theme. We value your friendship, your mateship, and on behalf of the United States, the United States Marine Corps, and the United States Navy, thank you.